Hi Sewing Bees, I'm Suki and welcome to the Beehive. I recently did a video called 10 non-sewing sewing notions, things that are basically laying around your house that you can also use in your sewing studio. And the video was well received, there were so many great comments, and it really encouraged me to make a second video, which is what I'm gonna do today. So today's video is gonna be all of the extra comments that you all left of non-sewing sewing notions that you can use in your sewing studio. Now, at the very end of this video, I am gonna touch on a non-sewing sewing notion that that I mentioned in the first video, but it's only because one of the comments was so good that I wanted to add it to it. So, I mean, I guess technically we're gonna do 11. Anyways, in no particular order, let's get started. Now this might not be laying around your house necessarily, but you can make a quick stop at the home improvement store like Home Depot or Lowe's, and you can pick some of these up. These are washers and they're really big. They're about two inches around. And then these are um, just really large nuts that you would screw on for bolts. Now, what would you use these for? Well, the most common thing that I've seen use them for is for paperweights. And just using just a few of them, they're really affordable. I mean, these were like 30 or 40 cents a piece. So, I mean, you could get 10 of them and you know, under five bucks, you'd have enough to last you quite a while, even with larger pattern cutting. Now, if I'm doing a smaller project, I do like using a smaller rotary cutter because I've had surgery in both of my hands. I can't, I can only go straight with my rotary cutter. I, it's really painful for me to like, articulate my hand around a corner. So if I am doing a smaller pattern piece like this, I want to have a rotating a rotary cutter mat. Um, I mean, there's actual rotary cutter mats that rotate, but this one will do fine for me. But now I'm able to just line it up and go around the outside the pattern. You get the idea. The other thing though, and this is a comment from one of the viewers from the last video, they mentioned that they take two of these, stack them on one another, wrap it with fabric, and then hand stitch it together. So that way you've got, you're having to buy twice as much, but it does hold twice the amount, I suppose. Um, and on, I really liked this as a tip from one of the viewers because I never really thought about using these before. They were not difficult to find, but I did have to ask somebody where the larger ones were. So I like these because especially around smaller areas, I think they're gonna really come in handy. I suppose you could also wrap these in fabric and you know hand stitch them so that you have something a little, little prettier, but whatever. I mean, they, they pretty much do the same thing whether they're just the metal or wrapped in fabric, but yeah, this is a really great non-sewing sewing notion that I will definitely be using in my sewing studio. Let's talk about rollers. When we are sewing a seam, the great Nancy Zeman told us that when you sew a seam, you should press the seam. That helps relax the thread and the fabric, and I like to say it makes them become best friends. So when you're pressing a seam open, same thing goes, you know, press it flat, press it open, or depending on what the pattern tells you, maybe press it in one direction. Just follow your pattern. But one thing that is true is you want to press. Now you can't always press every material with your iron. So, and then, you know, maybe you don't need to, maybe you don't wanna hop up and go press. So there are a couple of roller options that are very affordable and things that you may have laying around your house. So this one here is a facial roller. So it's really designed for um, when you're putting your moisturizer on or whatever your skin care regime is. It's real, I gotta tell you, this is made of jade, but it's really relaxing, it's very nice. Um, so this did come from my bedroom, but I found this originally at the dollar store. Now I've seen fancier ones, seen ones that are more expensive, but this one cost me a dollar and a quarter. So I'm not really sure what the difference between the jade or you know ones that are a little more expensive maybe it's just better hardware this you know this is kind of cheapy but it does the trick so how is it going to help what we're talking about well after you press the seam flat then you go to press it open this is just something nice to keep next to your sewing station that you can just press your seam open and it's just a really nice little roller now this was a tip from one of the viewers from the last video they had suggested a wallpaper roller. Now I gotta tell you, I went hunting for this. I thought I'd find this real easily. I went to two different hardware stores, no luck. And I even went to like the big box stores. 
I ended up finding this from Amazon. I'm happy to leave a link in the description, you know, or you could just go and like, you know, research where you could find a wallpaper roller. This one wasn't that expensive, just a few dollars. And then they had ones that were smaller, but I thought I might get the one that's two inches wide because when I'm working on larger seam allowance, this not necessarily, this is just a half inch, but I did like the idea that it presses beyond the seam. Whereas this is about an inch and a half. This is a little bit wider. So I think there might be times when you'd want to use one or the other. This is also the jade, so it's cooler to the touch. There's not going to be as much heat produced, whereas this is rubber. And then I have a, a plastic one that's in my sewing station that is actually a notion. And then I also have one that's wood. But hey, like I said, just a couple bucks. So if you want to just try the technique out, this does work really great. So again, some other little things that you can use in your sewing studio. All right, let's talk about clothespins. These have got to be one of those non-sewing sewing notions that I think everybody has either been recommended to or it's been recommended to me. I remember my mom using these for all sorts of things when I was growing up and for sure in the sewing space because it just fascinated me. I'm like, hey mom, that doesn't belong here <laughs> and she would use it. But just as simple as putting two pieces of material right sides together if you're gonna be doing some stitching, especially if you're gonna be doing a seam that's, you know, needs to be accurate, use these. They are lightweight. And the other thing too, again, I've had surgery in my hands. They're very, sometimes just putting stress like this is painful because of arthritis, whatever. Anyways, you know, it's part of getting old, <laughs> but it is really nice to have these not so hurtful as I'm trying to open them up. And they are really lightweight. The other nice thing too, is if you're working on something like alterations, this is just a skirt that I desperately need to hem. And just as a matter of, you know, being able to have this laying around, I'm not using maybe some of my more expensive clips that I, I do like to use um, in my sewing studio. But these are just, you know, I paid a buck for like, I don't know, 50 of them or something. So yeah, using clothespins is really good. Another thing too is if you are a quilter and you're working on something that is maybe just larger and you need to get just as you're stitching, you know, under your machine, if something's just in the way, I mean, you can just kind of grab material and force it out of the way. You could also use these for when you're doing machine embroidery, just kind of putting the material out of, grabbing the material and just pushing it out of the way and clipping it to like your embroidery hoop. So there's lots of uses for these. I would love to know if you have any other uses other than what I just said here. So let me know in the comments below, what do you use? these clothespins for in the sewing studio. Let's talk about cleaning your iron. Now I have to say I'm really good about trying not to get fusible web on the bottom of my iron, but it does happen. So here was a suggestion from one of the viewers. There was actually two different suggestions. One was to use one of these little magic erasers. Now, if you do go check out the original 10 non-sewing sewing notions video, you will see that there's a really good suggestion on what to use this for, actually a couple of good suggestions, which you can use these little magic erasers for. Now I do have to let you know that this is not even like the original fancy expensive one. I went ahead and got this one at like our local dollar store. So what you can do with it though, according to one of our viewers was clean the bottom of your iron. So now I tested this out on a cold iron and I felt like it wasn't as successful. So what I did was I turned my iron on and this is just like a little Oliso portable iron. I did have it at like the full highest temperature and then I unplugged it. I waited about five minutes. So there's still like maybe a little bit of heat to it. And then I just went like this. And I gotta say, I felt like it cleaned off anything pretty quickly. Then the other suggestion was to use a dryer sheet. So I have a couple of these and oh, I love the smell of these. But now this reminds me of something else I've seen in the industry that you can purchase. And what I was told, and I'm, again, there's no like instructions on the dryer sheet package on how to do this. <laughs> so we're kind of making this up. But I have to say what I tested it out was I went around like this while there was still a little bit of heat and I felt like, it, you know, definitely there's still some heat to this. Like I said, it's been unplugged for about five minutes, but I can see that if you had a lot of gumminess on your iron, I can see how this would be really handy. So anyways, there's two different suggestions of things you can use to clean your iron. The next is washi tape. This comes in 
thousands of different prints and colors. I've seen them for holidays. It's essentially a low adhesive tape. Often you'll find this in the paper goods department of like a craft store, maybe like scrapbooking. Um, I've seen it used for all kinds of things, but today we're gonna talk about four different ways that you can use this in your sewing studio. The first way is to mark your tools. Um, now I teach nationwide and when I go to a class, everybody has their sewing supplies and they will sometimes print out something and with their name on it. So that way they can identify this is their rotary cutter because they literally all look the same and we don't want anybody to walk home with somebody else's notions. So what you can do is take some of this washi tape. Again, it's low adhesive. It will go on easy. It will come off easy and you can mark your sewing notions real quickly. Now, of course, these have my name on them, <laughs> but you can put something to identify that they belong to you. And I just wanted to show you how easy this tape does kind of go on and you can put it on even like the metal and it's not gonna it's not gonna hurt your your scissors or your notions but even for like the plastic on the pin cushion so this is just a really easy great way to identify your notions and then if you ever decide you don't want it on there anymore it's gonna peel off real easily the next place that you can use the washi tape is on your clear rulers. If you know that you're going to be cutting the same distance over and over and over again, sometimes our eyes can get fatigued when we're cutting. And obviously I would have a cutting mat underneath this, but what is really nice is you can use that washi tape, line it up with whatever the line is that you need. And you'd be able to just very quickly see what that is. Now I didn't even finish going through the whole, ruler here. I just wanted to show you that it, it goes on and off real easily and I'd be able to just go the full length and just tear it off. It tears off super easy. Let's say that you have to do a lot of one inch cuts, but then you have to do like a three and a half inch cut. You would be able to have multiple lines on your ruler as long as they're not overlapping and you'd be able to continue that on. So this is another great use of the washi tape. Now there are notions that are out there that are stickers that are for fabric, but again, you know, if you have this in your sewing studio and you've got different colors, you could use this to identify different materials. So this is just one that's, you know, little black that's got words on it, but really you would just be taking the tape, marking whatever it is that you need. A lot of times when you go from cutting to sewing, you need to know what is the right side up. Like this would be the top of the project. So a lot of times I'll do that with the washi tape. It's really simple. It again, it's low adhesive, so it's not gonna hurt or disturb your material. And it's just a really quick identifier for your fabrics. Again, there is tons of uses for the washi tape in your sewing studio, but the last one I'm going to mention today is very simply just your seam guide. You would just figure out what your seam allowance is. In this case, I've marked a half inch and then I've just continued it straight out. You could even go all the way down to the base of the machine. Again, it tears off super easily. And now you would have a real nice line to follow along as you're stitching. So yeah, using this for your actual seam allowance, seam guide is really nice. And again, this can be adjusted. If you know you're gonna be doing a lot of a half inch today and maybe you need to do like a nice hem that's an inch, you can have a couple of them marked on there. I'm not sure that I would wanna use anything that was too permanent because you know, this is my container where I, you know, I've gotta open this up and, and um, it's my free arm, so I wanna be able to take this on and off, but you could, go back in with a straight pin and this line right here. And I could just, just like that, I have cut the tape and now I'd be able to take this on and off real easily and still have my washi tape there as my, my seam guide. So that's another use. This is a great idea that somebody emailed me and it's to use nail polish to identify your presser feet. Just like we were talking about how you want to identify your sewing notions, the presser feet all tend to look the same too. So what's nice is you can put the nail polish anywhere on your presser foot. I probably would avoid putting it on the bottom because that's gonna touch the material. But I would say like right here, you could just place the nail polish kind of like under where the foot is gonna snap, where it's gonna snap onto the foot. 
and just let it dry. And then if you ever felt the need to remove this, maybe you want to sell a presser foot or I, I don't know. I mean, if you ever just want to get rid of it for whatever reason, you could just use nail polish remover to remove it. Now it might permanently discolor the Teflon ones or the plastic ones. I can't say with all certainty. If you do know the answer to that, let me know in the comments. But this has worked for years. In fact, there is a national educator for Bernina who I know <laughs> when I see her press her feet, I always know because she's got a little mark on hers as well. So this is just something that I came into an email and it was a good reminder because this is an item that's sitting around your house. You know, most of us have nail polish in our house and that is what you can use for it. You could also mark your other items if you really wanted to before we were talking about using the washi tape on your scissors and stuff, but you could also use a little dot somewhere maybe not so conspicuous and that way you could also identify your sewing notions. The next non-sewing sewing notion is probably something that you've already got laying around your sewing room, but if not, now's the time to get one. You don't have to get a fancy one. This is literally one that I got from the dollar store. Sometimes they don't have them though. So if you find them, grab them. It's nice to have uh, in your sewing space. But I mean, we have a dog that has long hair. And so we, we constantly are uh, using a lint roller. Now I call these a roly poly, but that's just what I call them. But basically what you're gonna use this for is to clean up the whatever in your sewing space. And you can see that just even like threads, I'm gonna go ahead and use a new thing here now, but you can also clean up like fabric scraps. So just like that, we've been able to clean up our fabric scraps. And then the last one isn't for everybody. And look, my fabric scraps just came off. So I'm gonna redo that. <laughs> and then the last one though, isn't for everyone necessarily, but if you work with like faux fur, there is a right and a wrong way to cut fur. You really don't want to just cut through it like this because one, you are gonna make a horrible mess, but really more importantly, you're actually cutting the, the fur itself. You're cutting the fibers. And so it's not gonna lay as nice. It's immediately, you know, looks fake. Usually what you want to do is follow whatever the pattern is that you're doing and you only wanna cut the mesh material not the actual fur. So the proper way would be to come in and cut this direction. And so now what you're doing is you're not cutting. See how the fur is still there inside the, the extra area. Whereas what we did here is you're just cutting off the fibers. So either way, no matter what, you will make a mess when you use this material. It is bound to happen because it's fake fur. <laughs> so these fibers are going to go everywhere. So really once you've picked up your material and you are left with whatever pieces of the fibers are left, you would want to just go back in and clean it up with your roly poly or your lint roller. Now I have to tell you, there is another tip on how to clean a cutting mat. If you go back and check out the first 10 non-sewing sewing notions. That one is a really good trick. So I'm not gonna share it with you. You gotta go watch the other video, but there is a link in the description. The next is a fork. This is something that I've seen for years tried and I've always wanted to try it myself and somebody reminded me about it. Now there are notions that you can use for this particular application, but there are several things you can do with a fork in your sewing space. Today, I'm just gonna show you one and that is to use your fork as helping you get perfect pleats. You would just get your you know, sewing started. So we're gonna get our machine going. And then you would take the bottom prong, slide it underneath the material, and then flip it until you get the right distance. And see, so you can actually take your time and get that pleat right where you want it. And then move it out of the way. But then you can use the fork like a stiletto too, holding it in place. Now, once I capture, like, you know, hold on to that other pleat, I'm gonna do it one more time. I'm gonna go underneath, flip it around, get it adjusted where I want it. And stitch it off. And there you go. You've been able to create pleats with a fork. How cool is that? The next item up is a suction cup hook. Now you can get these in different sizes and I've seen various hooks. I've also seen 
little hooks that you can like 3M tape, like it's a little tape that you can put on your whatever it is that you're putting on and then you pull it out. But I do like the suction cup ones. Now, usually they need a little something moist on them to help like really suction them on. Ah, so I literally just licked that, so I'm sorry, that's kind of gross. But <laughs> anyways, we're just gonna put that on the front of our machine, you know, give it a second to make sure that it's attached to the machine real good. And then you can use this to hold your scissors. Now, I have to say this was a tip that came in from one of the uh, comments, and I really like the idea. I think there might be other uses for this too in the sewing space. I mean, even if you put this on the back of the machine and you used it to guide with thicker cording or threads, um, a lot of times you want to use like a yarn in your stitching. I think that you could have a couple of these in different places, like one here and one here, and it would help guide the yarn in for when you're doing decorative stitching. Anyways, let me know what other ideas you have for these little suction cup hooks that you can put on your machine. And last but not least is a microfiber cloth. Now I found one that's actually like a glove, which I think is really cool. Then I could just slip it onto my hand. I got these little nubby things on one side, so maybe I can get into smaller areas. But really, a microfiber cloth is wonderful for your sewing space just to clean dust. Now, I live in Florida. Florida is just like, it's like dust is just welcome into our home. I can, I, and I have a dog, so I sweep twice a day and I never not have hair on my floor, but then I also dust at least three times a week because there's just constantly dust. So I gotta say that this definitely helps. And I sometimes forget that I have these. You can get them anywhere. I mean, you can get fancy ones if you want to, but I mean, I just get mine from the dollar store. Um, then they're kind of disposable. You can see though, like the dust and the dirt right here. I do like the glove. So when I find these, I usually buy three or four of them Then I have them for a little while. You can wash it, but again, this isn't like the most luxurious quality of a microfiber. So this might last one or two washings and then it's ready to go in the trash. But this is just a really easy, great way to keep your sewing machine and your, especially your embroidery machine and your serger just kind of dust free on the outside of the machine. And the bonus thing I promised I'd share with you is about this clear medical tape. And in the original video, I talked about tapes, all different kinds and what you can do with them. And this was a tip that somebody shared that I had to uh, kind of add to this video. So if you want to learn more about what you can do with different tapes, head over to the original 10 non-sewing sewing notions. But I wanted to share this one because I thought it was really cool and I'd never heard anybody talk about it before. So the idea is to take this clear medical tape, which just for the record, it perforates real easily. You can find it in, you know, like your medical section at pretty much every store. I got mine at the dollar store, but I was at the grocery store the other day and I saw that they had it there as well. Maybe just a little nicer quality. But anyways, what you're gonna do with this, this is like the additional tip from my viewer, is you will turn your ruler to the wrong side facing up. And then you're going to just put a few different pieces around the ruler. And what this is gonna do, and that one's too big, maybe like a total, like every three inches or so. I'm not really sure. I, I don't think that there's a real mathematical accuracy here. The idea is that, first of all, it's clear, so you can still see through it. But sometimes these rulers tend to slip and slide around when you're using them. But now, oh, look at that, it does work. <laughs> All right, okay, I am impressed. Let me get my rotary cutter. And we're doing this completely just like sideways here. I just really wanna make sure that some of these pieces of the tape are for sure on the fabric and are for sure on the rotary mat. But yeah, I can, Look at that. I mean, I can, it's going to move my mat. Maybe I should put this on the bottom of my mat. <laughs> but I feel like that, that is a really great tip. So that's from one of the viewers who watched the original video. So if you want to go see what else you can do with clear medical tape, go check out the original. Well, sewing bees, I really hope you enjoyed the part two of the 10 non-sewing sewing notions. Be sure to watch the original if you haven't yet so, and you can also subscribe to this YouTube channel if you did enjoy this content. But more importantly, share this with one of your sewing friends. That means the world to me to help get my name out there. And until I see you next time, I hope you have a creative day. Bye-bye.